Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? Chinese egg rolls are one of the foods that I'm simply addicted to, but they gotta be done right. If they're greasy and soggy, the cook should have a finger cut off because making a good crispy egg roll is very simple. It doesn't matter if you're making Chinese egg rolls, cheesesteak egg rolls, nacho egg rolls, Reuben egg rolls, mac and cheese egg rolls, or bacon cheeseburger egg rolls. It's a very simple process that so many people get so wrong and what makes some people leery of making egg rolls at home. So rather than taking a chance and making soggy egg rolls at home, they head to the frozen food section and pick up frozen egg rolls like these Imperial Garden shrimp, chicken, and lobster egg rolls that I picked up at my own personal adult playground, the Dollar Tree. These egg rolls all weigh five ounces each and obviously only cost a dollar because everything at the Dollar Tree only costs a dollar. And a five ounce egg roll is a pretty good size egg roll. So let's go over the ingredients. The chicken's on the top, the shrimp in the middle, and the lobster on the bottom. They all have lots of ingredients and sources that often or always contain process-free glutamic acid like monoamodium glutamate, yeast extract, maltodextrin, and probably some other things that I've missed. If you see something I've missed, please post them in the comments. They also have textured soy flour and or isolated soy protein, which I'm 99% sure is the same thing as TVP, just in a flour form. But I'm no expert, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But what really surprised me out of everything, the lobster egg roll actually has lobster in it, along with the expected crab flakes, which I thought would actually be the lobster. I didn't really expect any real lobster to be in it. Now for the nutrition facts. From the left to the right is the shrimp, chicken, and lobster. They're almost identical with right around 240 calories, six and a half grams of total fat, less than a half a gram of saturated fat, a little less than 40 total carbohydrates, three grams of fiber for the chicken and lobster egg rolls, but with a little bit more at 3.6 for the shrimp. I wonder where the extra fiber comes from. The shrimp also has 10.1 grams of protein compared to the nine grams for the chicken and lobster egg rolls. I expected the shrimp and the lobster to be high in cholesterol because shellfish is naturally high in cholesterol, but the shrimp is almost double at 31.4 milligrams compared to the lobster's 16 milligrams of cholesterol. And the chicken is actually higher in cholesterol at 18 milligrams compared to the lobster. The chicken also has the most sugars at eight grams compared to 2.7 grams in the shrimp and two grams in the lobster. But the chicken egg rolls have the least sodium at 367 milligrams compared to 452.7 in the shrimp and 460 milligrams in the lobster. Honestly, they're all lower in sodium than I really expected. There's three different ways you can cook these. And like I said in the beginning, I'll stab you in the eye if you give me a soggy egg roll. So microwaving is out. And yes, I agree. The optimal way would be to deep fry these. I have a conventional oven, so I'm gonna cook these at 400 degrees for 15 to 16 minutes. At the top, it says to keep them frozen, but right above the directions, it says if thawed. So I'm assuming the times are based on thawed. So since I'm cooking them frozen, I'll cook until they're done rather than based on the suggested time. When I took the fatties, I mean egg rolls out of the wrappers, they look pretty good. And each one came with a good sized packet of duck sauce. So I can figure out what egg roll is what when they come out of the oven, I put a piece of the egg roll wrapper next to the lobster roll. Then the chicken egg roll is in the middle and the shrimp egg roll is on the other end. After 17 minutes, the shrimp egg roll is done and looks perfect. The chicken and lobster egg rolls, however, looked hideous and soggy. So I placed them back in the oven and checked them after five minutes with no real change. So I'd let them go for another five minutes for a total of 27 minutes. And they still look soggy after 27 minutes. And I forgot to mention, I did flip these egg rolls at the halfway point as recommended. And the smell of rotting cabbage was wafting through my house as though fat bastard just expressed his anal glands. I love cabbage, but something smelt off with these. 
I gave the best looking one a try first, the shrimp egg roll. And as you can see, it's about as perfect as you would expect a dollar egg roll to be. And it's crispy as a day old scab. But the inside had the aroma of a wet sock. The cabbage was musty and mushy, to the point it reminded me of an old fling I had. I didn't taste any shrimp in the egg roll at all. Now the fling on the other hand, I tried a little duck sauce, which tasted like the regular duck sauce you get from a Chinese restaurant. And it fortunately covered up some of the musty taste. If the best looking and crispiest one isn't good, I was scared to try the other two. But I must proceed, because I do this for you, the people, so you don't have to. Next I tried the chicken egg roll, and right from the start, this turned into a clusterfuck, as the egg roll simply imploded as I tried to cut it. Don't let that piece of white substance fool you in thinking it's a piece of chicken, because it wasn't, it was a piece of cabbage. I didn't see or taste any chicken in this one or shrimp in the other. But hey, the ingredients said it's in here, so it's gotta be in here, because the ingredients are like the internet. If it says it, it's got to be true, right? This had the same musty, mushy flavor and texture as the shrimp egg roll. And if you were ever curious as to what the infamous gym teacher, Lassie from Porky's, was tasting in her popular scene, try one of these egg rolls and I'm pretty sure it's the same taste and texture. Again, the duck sauce helped minimally. Finally for the lobster, and as you can tell while I'm cutting it, I kept letting it go because it was still hot as balls. Even though the wrapper was mostly soggy, it did have some crispy flaky parts. But the inside of this one looked the worst out of all three. Kind of like a blended concoction of what the fuck is this? But I've got to say, as much as the inside of this looked like vomit, it actually tasted like some sort of seafood and almost decent. It was borderline. Hmm, is this safe to eat or is that a spoiled seafood flavor I taste? So I doubled down and took my chances and took one more bite with the duck sauce and still couldn't come to a conclusion if it was really good or not. But it was the best of the three. These egg rolls pretty much sucked, but I do think they would have been a little bit better if they were deep fried. The outside would have definitely been better, nice and crispy, on all three versus just the one, but that didn't make any sense why the shrimp one was the only one that got nice and crispy, and the chicken and the lobster was soggy like a sock and I'm not really sure how deep frying would have helped that musty cabbage flavor. It was pretty bad. So once again, the Dollar Tree's bargain is no bargain. And my rating out of 10 for these would have to be a one out of 10. If you'd like to show your support to the Wolf Pit, please consider being a patron. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month, that's only $12 for the whole year. Or you can pledge more, it's up to you. But every little bit helps me produce more high quality videos more often for you, the people. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you do not give these a try. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you soon.